Today's session will be about finding the right hands to bluff. I think will be a really cool session. I can say that confidently because we have some really awesome hands, really curious ones. When I reviewed them, I was not really sure. Like, were some of the bluffs too optimistic? Were some of them wrong? So we're gonna check it out very critical today. To start it off, I wanna tease one hand and then you know what you can expect this session. So what is actually happening here? I have pocket tens, I open, we're not gonna do a deep dive just yet just want to give you a brief introduction of what you can expect so i open i face a free bet i call the seabed on the flop turn goes check check and now i arrive on the river making the all-in bluff so is it the right play if you want to know the answer here is it the right hand to bluff does it fit the theme here from our session then you need to be a little bit more patient stay till the end we're gonna kick it off more slowly more structured i want to give you good examples of what hands to bluff how you should think in those situations and one once we master that, then we get to complex hands like this as well. I seen immediately one answer in the chat that nope, we are not bluffing that hand. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not true. I will not spoil it just yet. So let's kick it off. Let's take a look at what is the buy-in that we are playing here. This is a 3k tournament played on GG poker. I defend the big blind here with queen nine off suited, which is fine. It's just a min race. I also get a good price. Flop. I have a lot of ideas right now. Let's take a look at what is the action. Goes check the round. Now the small blind decides to bet and I could call it, but I thought I have a ton of fold equity if I make a move because I have a straight draw. Having some equity is nice, but that's not enough. I also have the diamond and I also have the spade. So I take out all the stronger draws, basically. I take out queen nine of diamonds. I take out ace queen of diamonds, king queen of diamonds, nine eight of spade, king nine of spade. This is such an amazing combination in terms of preventing them of having a really, really good hands here. We're really, really strong draws that I just thought I'm going to use it. And as one at seven, you say it, I have the most threes here. I have the highest amount of trips. That's correct. And that's why I decided both factors combined, the ones I mentioned with my colors and your argument with I have the most freeze combined made me raise that hand. And then he called and then when he calls right now, I think it's pretty likely that he has the top bear check, maybe a 10, because I already cover so much of the suits that he doesn't have that many of them, honestly. And now going to the river, I figured, sure, I improved the pair, but I mean, how should he call me? Like, you think you get called with check of hearts now either he thinks now i had the trips on the turn already or if i had a draw then it arrived so basically i think i would never ever get a call of king check of hearts now it feels like impossible that he can bluff catch this situation it's just everything got there or i had the trips already on the turn so i think this is a very nice hand to bluff i went for it i believe it worked out let's check that yes it did work out and i won a very big hand here actually power suited i like that definitely of those colors i'm power suited good this is a cool one guys this is an awesome one i can tell you right away this must have been a high stakes tournament i can see that nikita batsikowski is opening here so we got a bunch of guys then we also have one of the weaker players here and under the gun too and let's take a look at what is the buy-in here it's a 10k tournament all right 10k tournament nikita i am ready for you let's see goes check check on the flop i have a gut shot so depending on the action i'm not just falling right away good yeah it was a friendly fire i agree i have no issues with ben of course we were rivals back in the days by the way with ben cp i played so many sit and goes against him so definitely there was a time where we, we were rivals and i believe we both have a strong ego so a little bit of friendly fire can't hurt goes check 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 again here so if there is a bet now i have a gut shot i also have the heart but i I think I would still need to fold. It's just the ace is just too good. Yeah? And even though I have some ideas, I think I would have to let it go. But I already told you this hand is awesome. So how can the hand get awesome even though nothing happened in the hand? And the action starts here. I'm like, okay, could I bluff it now? I have the third pair blocked the straight, but there's still a chance that I can win it. I mean, they could both have king jack or queen 10 suited and have pure give up sometimes, you know? I thought, let's not bet it. It might be possible, but I didn't go for it. I checked. Now there is a bet and now there is a race. And I'm, you know, I'm always thinking about what would be my best bluffs. And that's what we are trying now to gather here as well. I do not have any solo thing. It would be very, very 
very complex running this freeway, but it's also not required. We can also use our own thoughts, right? And this is about what are the best bluffs. I think the main value hand that is very, very important to block is the 6-5 suited. So this is absolutely mandatory. I want to block the nut straight because if I make any random bluff, like an all-in here, then of course the nut straight will snap call me. So it's absolutely crucial to block the nut straight. We can give that a check mark. So we have the six. We want to have a six or a five in the hand. And then the second card should be a pair. Why should it be a pair? Because the best call downs that they would have is, for example, like sets or strong two pairs, like threes, fours, sevens, ace, four, ace, seven. And so that's also really crucial that I have a pair. And now I will tell you something that you can remember. When the action was very passive, that I want you to remember. I want you to remember what I'm going to say next. If the action is very passive, like check, 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 check check then having the pair that appeared on the river is superior to all the other pairs and why is that the thing is if it goes checked around twice then it's just unlikely that somebody has a set of threes it's also unlikely that somebody has a set of fours so i told you it's important that we block a pair i want to block two pair i want to block sets but that's the thing that's why a three and a four it's good but it's not so great either because it goes check 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 and check 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 again so it's so unlikely that they have a set that block Blocking the potential set of fours is actually just a small thing. But blocking the set of sevens, blocking the ace seven, this is really nice because they can easily have them. They would check on the flop a lot. They would both check on the turn a lot. So now I'm blocking the only set they would really have a lot and they would play it all the time like this. They would check, check the flop, check, check the turn and now they would bet of course. Or if it was Bill Levinsky then he would raise now. And so those two factors combined, I realized it's probably the very best bluff candidate that is even out there. I could not think of a better one. As mentioned, quick summary, we block the straight, absolutely mandatory, and I block the sets. Not only any set, I block the most important set and the set that is the most likely for them to have. And also there is seven. I'm not gonna bluff this spot often. Don't think I'm crazy. If there's action like this, most of the time I'm just out. I'm like, oh, not of my business, you can have it. But if I have the very best bluff combination possible that I can find myself, I'm just going for it anyway. So I just go all in. It's like either I have the straight or they have nothing so we're not gonna play with a small race which are just gonna put the maximum and i believe there was a lot of tanking happening but in the end they both ended up holding they believe this is so hard for me to have a bluff here and i had it and i won it and that's what makes me happy of course they just can't call once you say that they just can't call and i mean i agree i mean honestly imagine you are in his shoes and you have the ace king i mean what are you gonna do or like nikita you're nikita here here have ace king you're gonna call with one one race and then a lane behind? Of course not. Like it would be burning chips. So the only player that could consider calling would be Bill Levinsky. But is it attractive for him? I mean, honestly, I think you get bluffed here one out of seven times or so versus population. So you basically cannot bluff catch unless you really give me the credit to go very, very aggressive in those situations. So that being said, now we're coming to the final hand. And I also think the coolest hand of today because it appears so random at first. So for the ones of you who are we're not here at the start i want to show it to you again the only question in this entire hand is the river but it's a huge question because it's so tough so what is happening i open early position the low check rebat so we know we are playing rather strong ranges i defend of course i'm not gonna fold pocket tens then if you were shorter significantly shorter like 40 pp you could consider raising and not having a problem with stacking off fair enough but at 100 big blinds we cannot raise and stack off like not even close so the best play is here the call for sure i did that turn is check check if he barrels now we would have another call with the 10 of spades but that's not what happened thing is now i go for the check and now he bets right and for the ones of you who were there at start already you know that i made the all in but at first glance maybe this is a bit random just as a first glance we will do now the thought process as well the first glance is like ah i had a hand that i liked i had one spade now i think i'm not ahead and just going all in but now we need to ask critical do we actually think that this is a play here do we actually think think that this is a play and that's the question now and we're gonna do it exactly as we did it every single previous hand we're gonna look at different hands that we could have and we are trying to find now what is the best bluff that i could do here and let's ask ourselves what hands could i even have here that i might want to bluff of course i could have ace queen with one spade i could have ace check with one spade ace check actually i would fold that preflop so i take that back i cannot have ace check here even ace queen is very close i must 
let's say. But let's say we have ace queen. Ace queen with one spade is not a good bluff because it's just a call. It's too strong. Bluffing ace queen here with one spade is an overkill. That's definitely not a bluff. What about ace four of hearts? Ace five of hearts? I called him pre-flop. I think I called a flop as well. I get a good rise even though I don't have a flush. And then goes check, check, turn. But can, should I just randomly go in now with ace five of hearts? That's certainly a worse bluff. So that's not a better bluff. That's what we can say for sure. And now slowly I'm starting to think maybe it's not random what I did here. Because after thinking for like one minute so far I could not come up with a better bluff yet. Let's keep thinking. What about 8-7 of hearts? I call the flop with 8-7 of hearts. Goes check, check. Now he bets and I go all in. That would be also completely random. That's not the play. And because then I don't block the flush. I don't block the straight. Like that would be totally random. So actually the more I think about it the more I like the bluff. Because I basically cannot find a better hand that I could possibly have to bluff. Let me take a look in the chat. Did somebody of you come up with a better bluff yet? It's great as you say this is a hard hand to analyze. For sure it is tough. But we just need to try our best and I want you to see my thought process. I always try to think about different hands and what I think are the best bluffs then I typically would go for them. And if I cannot find a single bluff that is better than my current holding well then the only answer for me can be that I need to bluff this hand. If I cannot even find any other hand that I would bluff, then I really want to bluff this hand. It's great as you then also said pocket 9, 7, 6 is 5s that are there are other candidates to bluff. Let's think about that. You say pocket 5s for example with one spade. Yes, I don't think it's bad. But if I would have to be able to choose between pocket 5s and pocket 10s, then I still think the pocket 10s is better because I also block the straight. So if I want to take the absolute best bluff, I think 10s and 9s for that reason are better than 5s and 6s. But those would be potential bluffs that we could think about. AA Caliber, you say 9 8 suited. That's a good one, honestly. You found a really nice one. That's a great answer. 9 8 of hearts. Sure, we don't block the flush, but at least we also block a little bit of the straight. So this is my second favorite one. We have the pocket 10s, we have the pocket 9s, we have the 9 8 suited. Somebody said ace 9 with the ace of spade, but that's not possible because I'm folding pre flop. With those strong positions, I'm definitely not continuing ace of spade, 9 of hearts, or something. So even on the river, it would be good. It's not possible. That's the point. We had a full breakdown and now we want to see the result. What does the solver think here? Was it random? Was it good? And ah damn, I do not have the detailed picture but I did look at it previously before this session and I can tell you that this now includes all combinations with and without spade. So right now it looks like we only are allowed to bluff 20% of time but if you had the spade it was closer to a 50-50 decision. So if I had my hand with a spade then I can be actually pretty aggressive and I believe pocket nines was also like 30-40% bluffing. So we were right to some degree. Then there was an answer in the chat 9 it suited which I raised. I said actually I think this is a very good find but apparently the solver does not agree. Solver seems to value the flush blocker too much here. I told you I like it because for my thought process it sounded fine but solver said ah no we actually want to have the spade and some of you said maybe pocket 5 sixes, and we can see that it's sometimes allowed. So not bad. Good catch to find this one. So I'm completely fine with that but the question remaining is did it work? Because if you said all the previous hands worked then I really hope this one goes through as well. I can't remember. One, two, I got the fold. Very nice. Very, very nice. I like that. And this is also why I chosen this picture for the session because it really looks like I'm gonna make some aggressive bluffs today, doesn't it? I'm like rubbing my hands and I want to find them. And that's also a little bit of the mentality I have sometimes going in. I really don't want to play afraid because if I play online and I have five tables, then I will never be afraid. If I bust on one table, I have four hours left. It's all good. But especially for the ones of you who also play live poker, sometimes mentally it's not that easy. You play a tournament six hours and then you risk busting with a completely aggressive bluff like my pocket tens all in. And imagine I get called. Of course I will ask myself, damn it, did I just punt my stack away? Was it necessary that I go all in here? But then on the other hand, I try to get rid of those thoughts. I cannot think that way. I need to think, was it a good decision? And if I think it was a good decision and if I was not able to come up with a better bluff, then I just need to be fine with that. So if I get snap called by not flush and I bust, 
I cannot be angry. I need to tell myself, well played. I tried it. I think I played the best poker that I could play. And that's the mentality that I want to tell you here. Don't be afraid. If you follow my thought process, if you think you have a good hand to bluff it, I think you should go for it. And it doesn't mean that you should bluff all the time and everywhere. You really want to bluff the good hands and the best candidates to bluff. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this. So if you want to see more, go to pokercode.com. You can join our Discord channel. You can also get some of the content for free, right? Like this session, it was public. But of course, not all the content is public, but we'd be happy to see you around. And that's it for me.